All right, welcome back to KM6 LYW Radio. Hey, this is the show where we talk about amateur radio with an emphasis on data modes, kind of reimagining them in a modern information age, making amateur radio more accessible. So, hey, to make to, to connect things to amateur radios, we're going to need Raspberry Pis, we're going to need cell phones. Uh, we need to connect them somehow. One of the more popular ways to do that is over Bluetooth. And I've got a cell phone up here. I've got a Raspberry Pi down here. In fact, this is a DigiPi connected to an ICOM 705. If you want to build a DigiPi yourself, uh, we've got that at Krager.org slash DigiPi. You can download the SD card image for the DigiPi here. It's kind of a culmination of all the different technologies we talk about in a single SD card image. And you just uh, put that in your little Raspberry Pi Zero or any Pi you want. And if you want to, you can put on one of these cool little screens that you see there so you can see what's going on. All right, so that's the DigiPi. And we're going to be working on that today specifically with Bluetooth. We're going to see if we can pair up a Wi-Fi or, or Bluetooth device like a phone or a tablet um, and do that using the Linux command line. There's not a lot of easy ways to do pairing. Um, let me go over here. This is the home page for the DigiPi and I'm going to fire up a shell here. Make this bigger. It's reasonably large. Now the Raspberry Pi login is almost always Pi with the user with the password of Raspberry with a P. And you get your shell prompt prompt. Don't be afraid of the command prompt. Now I know in the DigiPi we make everything accessible via a browser, and technically we are still using a browser. But when it comes to Bluetooth, it's it's difficult to do the pairing. I mean, it really depends on the device. I mean, I'm sure all of you have, you know, you, you pair your phone to your car speakers and or your car radio, and every every now and then it just goes it loses it or you can't find the device. And that's no exception here, really. You know, the Bluetooth protocol itself is a little wonky. There's lots of different versions, uh, so old things might not work with new things. Um, and that's no exception for the Raspberry Pi environment. So here we are at a command prompt. We're on a, we actually got a shell prompt on this Raspberry Pi that's booted up right here. It's DigiPi. And uh, we're logged in. Now the first thing we can do is run H, uh, HCI config. HCI config. I can make this bigger. And that's going to tell us if we've even got a Bluetooth device on here at all. And we see a bunch of stuff. I'm going to scroll this a little bit bigger. So it's not uh, scrolling off the screen. Hopefully you guys can see that. I'm going to get rid of the Raspberry Pi. How about that? That looks cool. So I type HCI config. And sure enough, there's a device called HCI Zero. And it is a Bluetooth device. Now every Raspberry Pi, modern Raspberry Pi, has one of these. So we know it's there. We know it's up and running. Uh, since we're on the DigiPi, uh, the DigiPi has a read-only file system by default. So we can type super user do sudo so that stands for uh, remount and that's going to make the file system read write um, we run hci config we now have a read write file system I've, i got some notes here just so i'll make sure i don't miss anything because this is complicated right uh, for for you know if you've never done this kind of thing um, so what we also want to do is su restart the bluetooth service so a system c system ctl restart Bluetooth um, system CTL. So, so there's a Bluetooth daemon running out there in the, in the background. It's kind of listening for connections and managing that device HCI zero. But since we just remounted our file system, uh, read, write, it can now write to the file system. We're just going to restart it. So it knows that uh, one thing you can do is uh, sudo su dash root. This make, gives, makes you, gives you the root prompt. See how my prompt changed to a pound sign rather than a dollar sign. This means we're God. We are now God on our Raspberry Pi. <laughs> and I'm going to see the change directory in slash var slash lib slash Bluetooth. All right. Hit return. I'm going to do an ls there. And we see the MAC address for our device here. It's, it's a B8 something 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 11. And it should correlate to the same MAC address we saw when we did the HCI config command. Now, you don't really need to know all of this stuff. But it's kind of a good background to see that how, you know, where things are stored. And what commands you can run to see if things are up or down or working or or you know or or even exist at all so i'm going to cd this puts me back in my home directory um so the next thing we want to do now that uh, we restarted the bluetooth service and we have a read write file system on the digipi is we want to run bluetooth ctl bluetooth ctl all right and we get a different kind of prompt so now we're kind of interacting with that bluetooth daemon that we just restarted uh, the first thing we want to do is turn on scan Actually, I'm going to turn on scan on. 
that should be our command and it's going to start looking for devices all over the place you know it's going to see this phone uh, it's going to see, you know this phone over here it's going to see this tablet um, all of these bluetooth devices it's going to see my daughter's nintendo switch i don't know why that pops up quite a bit and so the scan is on and we're starting and we're looking for devices um, so what we can do at this point is go over to our phone and we're going to put it into pairing mode so i'm going to pull down here so it's going to be a little different for every phone I'm going to hold down on the Bluetooth icon here, and we're going to see our existing devices. Um, I don't see DigiPi here. I see some other DigiPies. I have a lot of DigiPies. Uh, but we want to pair a new device um, while this is scanning. So let's go back. And let's do pair new device. Again, it's going to be different for Android, right? So this Android device is now seeable on the network while it's in pairing mode. And over here... If we look on our uh, Bluetooth CTL command line, we see something new that just popped up. It's called a Pixel 3a. And hey, that is exactly the phone that we're using that you see right here. Um, you can always type uh, devices and it'll show you stuff that's come through recently. But what we want to do at this point is take the MAC address. That's the unique identifier for this Pixel 3a. And we want to say pair. I'm going to paste it right there with my mouse, uh, 58CB523D9891, you know, that's the MAC address. And I hit pair, it says attempting to pair. Over here on the phone, it's, it popped up, says, hey, do you want to pair with DigiPi? I'm going to say pair. And over here, I'm going to say yes to confirm the pass key. And you'll notice my prompt changes to Pixel 3a, and it'll disconnect here in just a second. In fact, you'll notice the Bluetooth light just lit up on the DigiPi. <laughs> well, if I had the camera on over there. So we are paired. Now, we, we're not done yet. Uh, we still have to trust the device. So there's one more command we can do. That's trust. And we use the exact same MAC address. Uh, actually, I copied the wrong thing. Trust. And what was our MAC address? I'm going to scroll up here. Our Pixel 3a, let me find it. It's this MAC address. I want to trust that MAC address. And you'll see it says changing trust succeeded. Now that's it. We did it. We're paired. So we've the DigiPi trusts the phone, and the phone now trusts the DigiPi. At this point, we can just type quit. All right. We're done. We're paired up. I'm going to minimize this and go over to the phone here. So on the phone, you can see and see all devices. You should see the DigiPi, and we do. We see it down here at the bottom. So DigiPi is paired. Okay, great. You've got a. You, you've got your phone paired to your Raspberry Pi. Now what? Now you're not just going to play, you know, uh, you know, songs, Ted Nugent songs, right, to your DigiPi. This isn't about audio. Uh, Bluetooth can actually transfer data back and forth. So information. Um, uh, actually, we can create a what's called a serial port uh, profile. So we can actually send data. So if you're into APRS and packet radio, maybe AX.25 packet, we can fire up a program called Direwolf on the DigiPi over here. And then we can connect to that uh, instance of Direwolf through Bluetooth and use an app on our phone called APRS Droid. Um, I'm going to fire that up here. Now it's not tracking yet. There's, uh, it's not connected. So we've got to do. So we've got to run some stuff on our DigiPi first. So let's go over to Back to our DigiPi. Uh, first, I, there's probably a TNC running on there now. I'm going to hit, go ahead and stop the TNC. Uh, you can see it happen here. Because there's already a dire wolf running there, which is fine. We're going to get rid of that. So the screen's now blank. All right, so now what, I, what we want to do on our Raspberry Pi, and this could be a DigiPi or your Raspberry Pi, we're going to want to run this long direwolf command. And the important part here is the dash P option. Okay, this dash P means set up a pseudo TTY, like basically a serial port, so we can talk to it over a serial port. So I'm just going to run the direwolf, and I can put an ampersand in the back there so it runs in the background and I get my prompt immediately back. No, no, sorry, I guess that also... <laughs> So export also card to equals one. That sets your default audio device. Um, now when we run Direwolf, actually I wanted to uh, I want to run this as a regular user, not the uh, not the root user. So I can type exit, which puts me back into user pi. So I can say who am I? I am the pi user, and I'm going to do that also card set. This is a new thing on DigiPi to set the default audio card. It's it makes it simpler. And now I want to run that long direwolf command. I got a cut and paste buffer down here. 
run diary with the dash with the dash p option and I'm going to run it in the background. Okay, so direwolf is running. So if I do PSAUX, grep direwolf, we can see it's running. Here it is running with the dash P option. Okay, so direwolf is running, but now what we got? So direwolf is running, but it's still really not connected to your phone. Uh, so how are we going to talk to it? So there's another thing called RFCOM, and it's really the link. It links up your your Bluetooth interface to the direwolf network interface. So there's a KISS interface on the network on port 8001 and RFCOM is gonna link those up. And the single command to do that is right here, uh, sudo RFCOM and it's gonna create a device file. Remember we talked about device files in our last video called RFCOM. And it's used, gonna use something called SOCAT. It's basically a way to connect to a network port and relay information back and forth. So this is the RFCOM command and I'm going to go ahead and run that. All right, now everything is set for us to connect. We go back to our phone and use APRS Droid to connect to our Raspberry Pi, which is connected to our radio. <laughs> All right, so going into APRS Droid, I'm just gonna close this. So APRS Droid is something, is something you can get for Android. There's another one for iOS. It's not APRS Droid, um, APRS.fi. There's a new app for iOS, Hesu made it. Um, so check that out. I, I think it does a lot of the same stuff. You can also connect using Wode, which is a WinLink client for Android um, over Bluetooth. So these are the two apps we're really interested in. So let's go to APRS Droid. And I'm gonna go into preferences, we're almost there. We've almost got this connected. And connection preferences. <laughs> and then we go to connection type. All right, and I've got it set to Bluetooth SPP, that's serial port protocol. And that's going to use our Bluetooth interface that we, after we just did this pairing. And it's gonna to connect to the Raspberry Pi and use RFCOM to get to Direwolf. So I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say cancel, cause that's cool. Um, we're gonna set Bluetooth device. Um, it's the device we just paired and that's a DigiPi. I've got a bunch of other ones here. Um, you know, you compare to your, I don't know if you know this, but you compare to your Kenwood D74 too. It's got Bluetooth on board. So there's other devices. Uh, the Mobile Link D also, I don't have it here on me, um, also has a Bluetooth uh, serial port protocol on it. But today we're going to connect to the DigiPi. Hit cancel here. And then there's also the channel. Now this one's obscure. So usually for the digipi it wants to be on channel one that's kind of how the linux bluetooth stack works but like for the kenwood um you definitely do not want to set a channel um uh, just leave it blank and then for the mobile link d for some reason channel six is what it likes don't ask me why it's actually in the documentation for the mobile link d so even the channel stuff in the bluetooth protocol is a little sketchy but for digipi let's leave it at, at channel one and that's all we have to do for our connection type. So I'm going to go back. And now at the bottom here, the, the final, the culmination of all of our work, we're going to press start tracking. And it says connecting to something connected to TNC. This is what we wanted to see right there, this line. <laughs> so that means we won. And we can see the RF comm stuff in the background kind of going wild here. You know, I can see the connection happening. Um, it looks like I already transmitted a packet because I have uh, my tracker is on. You know, down here I can say send position. Uh, the display isn't on, but I can, you'll see it'll actually transmit the red light on the radio comes on over here. The DigiPi screen isn't on because we're not in DigiPi mode. We're just kind of doing this uh, with the, from the direwolf command line. So yeah, I sent a packet and it actually, it hurt itself. I think that's because the monitor's on. Um, I should be able to get a packet back from Georgetown if I'm on the right uh, frequency. Anyways, I don't know. You know what? I'm not even on. Uh, you know what is it with the 705 guys? The VHF antenna. So yeah, I was transmitting into the HF antenna. What the 705 needs is a a separate uh, needs two antenna inputs because I'm always doing that. I actually get pretty good SWR on my HF antenna. <laughs> At this time, you can see I actually got digipeded by uh, G Town, a digipeter a few miles away. So it worked. We connected our <laughs> our cell phone device this guy uh, to our Raspberry Pi, one of these guys, which is over here. And uh, we were able to run an app on, on the cell phone called APRS Droid and connect it up to Direwolf, which is a uh, AX.25 TNC. And we did it. So we connected over Bluetooth. I know that's a lot of moving parts, but there's really not an easier way to do this. I've tried a lot of other agent software um, besides Bluetooth CTL. In fact, uh, there's one called BT-Agent. Uh, 
and you can run that and it supposedly has a inter pin interaction and I was, and I would put it into the digipy and it made it all auto automatic and yeah it showed up on the network I could pair with the phone everything was great I was running APRS droid I didn't have to do any of this stuff but you know later on the phone would just like lose track of it uh, after you restarted the devices so there there's other bluetooth pairing agents out there uh, and I can't get any of them to work to be honest uh, the most reliable way to do this is with that bluetooth uh, ctl command that we just talked about and then it works with every device it works you know with apple stuff android stuff it works with this tablet so for right now the bluetooth ctl is really the best most deterministic way to get a bluetooth pair um I, you know i spent a whole weekend trying to make this easier you know to make it work in the digipi because the digipi is really supposed to work with all you need with the digipi is, is a phone you know technically you shouldn't have to do any complicated command line stuff but for right now um at least you can get a shell on your phone in a browser on the digipi and you run run the bluetooth ctl comparing command um so that while that phone's doing phone stuff i guess i can move you over here um I'm going to put, hit Control Z and then BG. That puts the process into the background. Cool Linux tricks. Control Z to suspend it, then BG to background the suspended command. And I'm going to become root again with sudo su root. And this time I'm going to go into var lib Bluetooth. And here is our the device that we saw in HCI config. It starts with the B8. It starts with B8. So this is our Bluetooth device. And I'm going to change directory into that. I'm doing ls here, and you're going to see the device that we just paired with. You guys don't have to know this, but this is just kind of cool. And uh, I can cd into that. And now I'm going to do an ls here. And there's two files, one called attributes and one called info. And I'm going to cat info. And we should see all the info about the phone we just paired with. So sure enough, we go up to the top here. The name of it is called the uh, Pixel 3a. And sure enough, that's what this phone is. Um, you see the trust relationship is true. I think that's kind of where the wheels fall off on some of these. You know, when the phone loses the connection, the pairing, um, the trusted needs to be set to true. And I think that's where the other Bluetooth pairing agents fall apart. They don't set the trust relationship um, where Bluetooth control really does work. And there's exchange keys and stuff here that you guys really don't care about. All right. We did it, guys. We paired our phone and our tablet um, to our Raspberry Pi, and we were able to run APRS Droid um, to, with our device. And this uh, works very much in the same way. Um, you know, you can pair your phone with your Kenwood um, just using simple pairing stuff. Um, you don't need to know all this Linuxy stuff. And with the Mobile Link D is a super easy to pair with too. So ideally we'd get the DigiPi easier to pair with. I, I just wish we had a better Bluetooth agent, but uh, for, for maximum compatibility, run that Bluetooth CTL command. All right, I think we did it. All right, so last but not least, uh, we can't do any of this without you guys. You guys make this possible. Um, my patronage is just off off the hook here, guys. I, I can't believe <laughs> how many patrons we have. So Fu, Brian, Jake, Jason, Dan, Wiley, Christopher, Michael, Steve, William, Simon, Jim, Brad, Douglas, Ian, Don. Thank you, Don. Carlton, Simple, Buddy Brown. Right on, Buddy Brown. Thank you, man. I uh, appreciate it. Uh, and so I, I can't read all of these. Um, it seems like I, I, I read the same ones over and over. So I think this is a, this is an order of how long you guys have been Patreon or patron supporters. Really appreciate Fallen Yoda, David, Rocky, KB3AYY. I should make that uppercase. Mihai. I, I, I think I get your name right. Hey, thanks for the call the other day. I appreciate it. We were talking about the Dire Watch screen um, and putting that. It's already out on GitHub, but I need to update that. So the, the driver, the display driver for the uh, the DigiPi. Uh, we, we're, we're, we're collaborating on that. Thank you very much. Uh, Jerry, Randy, uh, Bud, Bradley, uh, Fred, Don, JD, David, Jerry, Dusty. Thank you, guys. Scott, Allen. James, Mark, James. Hey, we got one. We got several Jameses here. PD1 PME. Hey, I printed out your base for the 705. Actually, a friend of mine printed it out. Thanks for that. Uh, that was fantastic. It's a, you can put the Raspberry Pi in a little base for your ICOM 705 and five, and the screen fits in the center of it. Looks totally professional. Thank you. A slimy green. James, Jason, John, multiple Johns, Simon, Jack, Tom. Uh, Robert, and then uh, Charles B. Jesse. Eh, thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. All right, you guys are Bluetooth experts now. Um, I know it's tricky. Uh, 
let me know how Bluetooth works for you guys. You know, maybe you've got a different pairing agent that's more predictable, uh, more deterministic. Um, I would really like to make this easier, but for right now, this is how we're pairing a Bluetooth. Uh, like and subscribe. We've got what, like 1,200 subscribers now. Just blown me away. I was, you know, I'd be happy if we had like 50, but you guys are really being supportive. I appreciate it. Hey, this is KM6LYW Radio, and I am clear.